What's up, Gears fam? Like a bad habit, we back at it. It's the one and only Jacob MVPR. That man is looking so absolutely fine. I mean, I just want to kiss him sometime. Look at him. My God. <laughs> My you God, why are you so beautiful? You, you, you gotta love is mutual, Colin. Happy to be here with you. It's been quite a while, man. The Pro League is around once more. And yesterday, the action was so intense. I, I just can't wait for today. I know it's going to be a good one no matter what. But Jacob, I kind of want to give you a second here because yesterday we got some big news. And if anybody understands that kind of news and has been through it before and has had to deal with that wheel at times, it's got to be you. You've been around since A1, since day one. Do you want to talk to the people for just a moment about the news that we got yesterday? I mean, at, at the end of the day, I think Blaze kind of said similar notes. We've been here before as a community, and I, I don't think that really kind of defines us. We as a community are not defined by one moment. We're not defined by one thing. It's not anything that really matters other than our passion for the game and our passion for competing. So let's just kind of blow this last season out of the water and kind of show everybody what they've been missing these past couple of years. And then honestly, I don't think it's really done for us yet. We might be taking a little bit of break, but nah, we're not done just yet. I, I feel you and echo every sentiment you just made. I really can't say much else. I put out my tweet just a few moments ago, about 30 minutes before we went live on the show. And I'm going to say it one more time. And I'm going to quote the one and the only Victor Hoffman, a guy that I've loved since the first time I ever heard that voice on a Gears game. We're going to retool and we're going to redeploy because there ain't nothing like a Gears comeback. There is nothing more fierce on this planet than the Gears fan when we're united under the banner of our passion and our pride and our love for this game, for these characters, for these players, for these teams. That's the thing we always have to remember. And that's the thing that we can go forward in this life with is while we are all still under this banner, while we're still gears fam, we put our best foot forward. We treat each other with the utmost of all respects. And we make sure that we prop one another up because a high tide will raise all ships. And even when you got a rinky dink pond to boat like me, you'll find a couple fish. I promise you, baby. Hey man, that's a beautiful words. Like, like I said, Colin, we are just going to have to celebrate what we have left because honestly there's still history to be made in the gears of war pro league yeah there's plenty of history i mean look somebody said it yesterday and i know it's no laughing matter to the guys that are competing for that championship but for now for the foreseeable future you got two more chances to win a world championship and <laughs> them boys from kcp they look been looking good they've been looking good they were looking good yesterday they were looking good a couple weeks ago and we'll get to that when we get to the kcp match when we get to the pioneers you'll get to hear me be a little stupider all right i swear for god I, i'm gonna go crazy on you during that pioneers match but for now let's focus up on what happened yesterday and all the results from across gears esports pro league yesterday i think the only interesting matchup that you can really talk about it all jacob the only one that didn't go 3-0 was that abuelos versus uh, team queso match i mean that's the only one we should really be talking about at this point because pioneers really shut down e united rise kind of took it to rebel even though it, it, some of those matches some of those moments might have been closed but the match you spoke up abuelos y susnitos taking on team queso and it was these moments right here you can see how far they came and how far they got up to 298, 299 at one point. And it was a comeback for the ages. I, I got to imagine how great Reflections and Blaze had to kind of call all this action. Somewhere, I'm pretty sure both Blaze and Taylor's voice box are in an infirmary. They're somewhere with a nurse. They're somewhere getting some, some nice needed rest. Hopefully they both got plenty of honey tea because you see it. I mean, you see, it. you get all the, you need one second. You got to make one last play. And all you got was Team Queso from top to bottom, giving you the work, giving you the hands, giving you the business. They shut you down one second away from victory and beat you when you get to 299. I mean, I've been in some heartbreaks. I know I got left high and dry on some dates where I thought I was going to go get a nice steak dinner with somebody, and instead I sat there by myself, and I ate two steak dinners. Well, I tell you, there's no way Abuelos didn't feel that kind of pain, that kind of pressure yesterday because all I can say is getting to 299 and getting stopped out, that's got to feel absolutely horrifying, and there it is. I mean, Taylor said it last year was a great divide, but I mean, it's got to be like the Grand Canyon right now, one through five, all one and own. If you're on the bottom half, you're staring at the donut in the first lane. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a hard one. Colin, but I gotta I gotta tell you, man, that sounds like a blessing and a curse, kind of getting left by yourself. But you got two 
steak dinners too? Not one, I, but two? I'm, I'm a fat boy, all right? I oh, need, I need man. it. I said, I said, I'm crying in my first steak, so it's going to be a little salty, but I'm going to be so fat. I'm going to be so worried about my cholesterol that I'm going to stop crying. So the second steak's going to taste delicious, but I had to get that first one down with a little extra salt. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm an emotional man. I started crying. I said, why would you do that? Hey, I tell you right now, those steaks was delicious. But hey, just like my double steak was kind of like a reward. You said it. It's a blessing and a curse. It is. You get a reward, but just watching, just showing up, ladies and gentlemen. Look at them skins. Them things is oh so beautiful. Straight out of Woodstock, it looks like, my man. Psychedelic on them. Yeah, honestly, Colin, I can't wait to kind of load in. I was already playing some games before the stream. I made sure to type a chat. Live.gearsofwar.com. Make sure you guys all kind of share the stream. Let's all go out with a bang. Like I said, live.gearsofwar.com. That's where you're going to be able to watch and win all these rewards. And, and to kind of be say, are, are anybody out there kind of collect them all, Colin? Do you have any skins missing in, the, in any of your collections? I'm missing like price seven. Price seven. I tell you right now, That's I didn't. Not a lot though. Look, look. All right, look. This is this is an honesty moment between you and me. Gears, gears, chat. If you want to hear it, you can. But this is this is just between me and you. I was so much a fan of franchise and Kenny. I was so in love with that reciprocity squad. I may have missed out on them NRG skins early on because I was so not going to root for them whatsoever. Cause I was like, it's reciprocity or die. It's, it's wreck or nothing. It's Kenny and Fran or bust for me. I was not repping them NRG skins. So Honestly, I'm, I'm as a nose. <laughs> Hey, that that little NRG moment and a little energy moment, Colin, they probably want to forget that as well. That was a little part of their history. That Shout wasn't out sneaky. the brightest. Shout out exclusive. <laughs> hey, yo, San Diego, oh, yo, I'll never man. forget. Th- that was oh. a run. Let's go back memory lane, man. That was an awesome event for us. San Diego. Energy going out as early as they did. Honestly, I think that gave a straw life. It got taken away later by reciprocity, but I think it gave them life. No, I don't have to go up against them. One of the only teams that can consistently stop the Latin American powerhouses. I love it. I'm, I love I'm, t- it. I'm telling you. I remember sitting there watching that segment, and the analyst desk was all NRG. Everybody in the green was like, ain't no way they win in this match. And then at the end of it, you just see exclusive and sneak and all them just standing up, just waving. I'm like, yep. That's the first time I feel like they were so outplayed on rotations, especially Bunker. The way they played against NRG on Bunker, it, it probably had explosive mind just like that. So I won't even lie. All respect to the great Gilbert going down in history as one of the most winning players in Gears Esports. Man, I can go down memory lane all day. I have too many great memories of Gears Esports. Memory lane might be that way, but let's get our eyes this way because we got our first match coming up here soon and our second and our third as well. It's a full steak dinner, if I do say so, because that's a lot of good teams. There's a lot of hefty teams out there. We're going to start things off with Casa de Papel versus Rise Fury 1 going up against the reigning defending undisputed champions of the Pioneers, Pittsburgh Knights and Team Queso to finish off the night. Jacob, I know you're probably looking forward to that third one. I know you got your eyes out there on the prize. I mean, for Team Queso, man, you may be able to do it to some grandpas and their grandsons, abuelos y sus nietos. But let's see if you can do it against the Pittsburgh Knights. If you could do it against the Pittsburgh Knights, maybe I'll be a little bit more convinced in that moment. But honestly, Colin, we got we got to go ahead and go to Casa de Papel versus Rise. Rise are looking so good, so clean. Casa de Papel obviously making it sure that people know they're that up and coming roster. So there's so much to be said about this matchup. They are an up-and-coming roster, but you need to take note of these names because you're probably going to see them around for quite a while. No matter what, they're going to be giving it everything they got every time they roll out of spawn. You got Soulful Smokes, Danger, and, of course, Not Claw. Not Claw, so good he hadn't even been unlocked yet. I'll tell you that much. That's one of them hidden characters. You got to play the game in a secret way to get him unlocked here soon. Yep, honestly, this is what I like to see when it comes to Gears Esports. These up-and-comers, always, every single season, no matter what is on the horizon, they're still fighting because it's not always about the money, Colin. It's about that passion, being able to call yourself the best of the best. And with only a few short matches left in the season, this is the time to really claim the throne because, honestly, what do you kind of... Obviously, we're going to have our memories of the middle of it, but we're definitely going to remember who wins these final events and kind of set their names in stone in legacy for Casa de Papel or this next upcoming roster rise, who could it be? I mean, it could be either one of them, but I think this rise squad is looking absolutely fantastic. All I can imagine is that there is a new flame lit in the hearts and minds and passion of some of these guys out here. Avexi's 
and detox and ends them. They want to etch their names into the history books one way or the other. Rushies has been there multiple times now. Ghost gaming, reciprocity. That man has been to the top of the mountain and looked down at everybody. Them other three trying to break that curse. They're trying to get over that hump. They bring a championship home to a team like Rise. And yesterday, they started off on the good foot, baby. Shout out one time, James Brown. He used to talk about the good foot. Well, these boys started on it yesterday. Now, that's how you want to start the season, especially that man of Vexes, because he, he said it throughout so many teams, so many players kind of leaving and kind of departing. He said it doesn't matter. Those guys can kind of do what they want, because at the end of the day, I want to win a Gears Esports championship. I want to be able to call myself the best, even though I prove it day in and day out, because he was that Astro Battles 1v1 champion already. He just wants the cover. He wants the 4v4. He wants it all but he's got to win them all as well and what he's not going to be able to win tonight are these map bands i'll tell you that right now you can't <laughs> win maps that ain't here you can't win maps you ain't playing on let's take a look at what got banned out i'm gonna tell you right off rip i'm taking a look at these bands casa de papel they said i ain't playing on district and they look at checkout and now bitchy sure they had a few extra thoughts about just how good that platform fight has been for rise in different series yeah, honestly, a lot of these maps, it's just a great choices. Casa de Papel, they want to take out District. They know how great Rise is on that map. And then even when they're not playing so great overall, how consistently they're picking that map because they know they can kind of play through it eventually. Spire getting banned out by Rise. They want to keep it as close to CQC as possible. If you're Execution and, and check out Execution being banned, I kind of get it. They want to force maps that are more strategy overall. And when it comes down to Escalation, you ban out Training Grounds. You Kind of kind of pick your poison there there's three maps you bat out one you're forcing the other team to kind of make that big pick well here we go with our actual picks ritual canals for the execution Ooh. harbor escalation regency if we got to go to a map five it will be on clock tower but uh hey look jacob your former coach your former manager you've been it you've been and done it all former player i just don't know what possesses casa de papel to say you know what i'm ready i'm 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 ready to play rise on harper i really want to oh go my against god two peas in a pod two peas in a what? pod i told you it was it's three maps in escalation realistically you got to pick your poison do you want to play harbor do you want to play vascar but i gotta agree with you harper that's just one of those that might leave you on a sinking ship like the titanic in the middle of the open hoping that somebody just grazes across the ocean with a life vest or something because going into that map number three you better hope with every fiber of your being whether if it's ritual or canals you not only come out with a victory to at least leave it tied one to one but you need to not allow rise to gain any momentum whether you have it or not that's another story but you cannot allow rise to gain that momentum i'm telling you right now it's a good thing that they didn't tell me that harbor was picked in my ear i'm glad i didn't hear that because i'm, I'm about to make a meme out of myself but i'd have been sitting here like what did he say Just like I'm about to tell you and say to you, my map, my prediction for this this whole map pool. I'm this looks simple. This looks easy. This looks like you wake up in the morning and you say, I want some eggs and bacon. That's a good old breakfast. Put some bread on the side, baby. You gotta mop up. I do my eggs over easy, so I like to mop up with my toast. Just like Rise is about to mop up Casa de Papel. Honestly, I think, you know, these these are the moments. These are the moments. At the beginning of the season, you got to set the tone. you got to set the pace for what we're going to see from here on out. Especially with that announcement, you have to end big. Anything short of a home run or a grand slam is going to be a failure. I'm going to go with one team. Casa de Rise, baby. Let's go. Vex is about to stand up, and I feel like he's going to have an MVP season overall. I, they, is there just something wrong with you? You no, know, man, I'm just trying to have fun. This energy has an all time high. Actually, man. Hey, I got wait a music minute. in the back of my ears. Shout out. Just, hold on, Ooh. hold on. Time out, time out, time out. Okay, isn't, that, isn't that the one and only Shady's podcast, The House of Rise? I mean, it ain't a yo. coincidence. Let me tell you that. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> hey, yo. That was slick. Oh, man. I thought I was good at them, but you even better right now. Just like That's chat. They're probably trying to be pretty good at their predictions as well. They want to finish off strong, and they're going to pick Rise. Ain't no slouches out there in the chat. They know what they're going to pick. And, and Jacob, you know, they're probably already beating me because some idiot named Colin forgot to put in his picks, except for one. One of those picks was, I mean, it's been, it's been solid for like three months now. You call yourself an idiot. You didn't, you didn't have a pick. 
even though you kind of go KCP for every single matchup, kind of like your auto pick. That's a little bit of a safety net. Kind of have an auto pick for us. Sa- no, I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you, Carl. So, I mean, it's safety net in the sense if you don't pick. But <laughs> I will say that you call yourself an idiot. But I mean, I actually picked and I think I'm tied with you. Yo, word, word, word. Hey, I'll take that, though. I'll take that, though. Look, I don't know how it's going to work out. Is your chain, Colin? T- <laughs> <laughs> You've earned it. I've, I've earned, I've earned, you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it, baby. It'll, that gold chain will look good with that beautiful Hall of Fame ring. You know, I like to wear Come on now. Oh Come God. on now. But hold up. You're just whew, blinding out there with the amount of bling you got, Colin. But Rise versus Casa de Papel. Map number one, Colin. We're going to end up on Ritual. We know what Rise is going to do. They're going to get in your face. They're going to get aggressive. And if they somehow lose the initial, they're just going to get right back up and try it again. What do you think Casa de Papel is going to do? What is their recipe or if they have any sort of recipe for success? They've got to basically stop or slow down that that three-headed spear at the front line of the offense mm-hmm. for Rise. I know yesterday, Rushies was able to win the MVP overall. He was one of the best and most proficient players for that squad that they ever could have needed. But you're telling me on a map like Ritual, and then you got Harbor later on down the road, you look at the way that these maps are going to be played, the style they're going to be played. Rushies is going to get a lot of sneaks because of all the extra cover, but you're going to be in there with three of the best bouncers in literal history. One of the best bouncers that also has the switch em up style. I'm talking about Inzem. He's like, he's very reminiscent to me of a praise, of an Arodi, because Arodi learned how to bounce after being a god with the L trigger. Now I see Inzem coming out here and he's hitting people with those big body shots, letting them play themselves all that movement for nothing and then all of a sudden somebody says all right i'll play the damage game i'll just shoot over top of the cover and enzyme's like you think i lost this movie you you think just because i ain't got the shoes on i can't dance son let me come out on that floor and show you how it's done i'll give you the one two boogaloo all right and he hits him with it next thing you know they're coming right back off spawn not figuring out what the hell just happened to him I, I, I like the way you kind of really talked about Inzem and Rushies, kind of really kind of top it off. We know what Avex is going to do. You know what he sets his eyes on to kind of close out this season. We know what Detox brings to the table. But season after season, we talked about, especially in the beginning of the last one, the struggles of Inzem, the struggles of Rushies. But I agree with you. Yesterday, they came out with a little bit of a different fire. They came out like they wanted revenge on everybody for the rest of the season. And it kind of started yesterday going up against Rebel. Now it's today going up against Casa day propel but colin these are matchups that are honestly going to be for the other team to kind of step up to the plate and win so i just want to see if rise can kind of hold on to your consistent pressure that they put on teams and not let up off the gas and luckily we don't have to wait long because we're getting right into the game oh without a doubt getting into the fly through here between Rise and Casa de Papel. And look, you're going to hear all the sights and sounds all day long. But the best way to hear all those sights and sounds is with the official audio partner, Gears Esports. Get tournament ready at AstroGaming.com. Astro, the only choice for your audio, baby. I've been loving every single second of it. I'm still rocking my A40s. I'm waiting. to. I'm going to try, try to pay one of our TOs or our TDs over there. I'm going to try to pay him to teach me how to set up my A50s. Because I just, I just got to buy. I just got to pay it in a box. I, I, I might need it with my Go XLR. I got my blue mic. I got my A50s, but they ain't hooked up either. I, I need the TOs to kind of hook it up with the wireless. I need to be able to walk around and exert this energy. Just like ex- Rushy's exerting his dominance to start off the initial. He's able to get one. Avexis gets dropped down early, but they have the numbers. Not Claw gets taken down by Rushy's and ends them. But they're going to try to draw them out, stagger it, bleed them dry, and make sure that Costa de Propel has to waste so much time gearing up for their next push. Let's see what they do here is that torque bow is going to ring out. Inzem here, first line of defense, shot over the top, back rolls away. And that's what I'm talking about. That kind of damage gives them that opening. Thankfully for the side of Casa de Papel, they had a frag grenade to take care of him. Detox revving up the bow, hits him with the hip fire. Beautiful little montage shot there. Rushies and Avexis on the opposite side, trying to hit a 2v1. One more big shot here. Avexis plays him like a fiddle, playing that beautiful Dizzy Wallen skin, baby. He's got the hat on. You know how I'm feeling that. You know you can't just run dizzy with Colin on the mic and not get a shout out, baby. 
him, you smell bad. Oh, you can already see him. Just ends him, making sure he knows his place, his position. Because Rise is definitely standing tall above their opponents. Rushy's putting down that Lancer fire. Now he's going in for the elimination. Nose Detox is there for the backup. Gets the revive and the down. They get so many eliminations, and they're just getting the pressure and the position all around them. And that's what's allowing them from both one hill to the next with very little contestation. So for this next hill, Casa de Papel, they have to strike hard. They have to strike fast. Otherwise, they're going to put themselves in a hole that very few men could say they pulled themselves out of. I mean, my man, you're normally the one that does this, and I stole a page out of your book when I was working with Taylor a few weeks ago where you found out how many points a team got off the hill before rotating on to the next. It's 75, 77 to 3 now. You said that first hill didn't have much contestation. It looks like Casa de Papel has got plenty of procrastination as it's taking them forever in a day. I mean, it's taking them longer to get ready than I do for a date, but it takes a whole lot to make this pig look acceptable. It's 81 to 3, and Rise is still finding kills, finding chunks, finding rotations. Paper House finally come away with that hill, but I mean, it's a 70-point differential on the Vex is here at the Torpo with a possible little 1v1 to have to worry about. He's going to get tagged up with Snub, pulls back against Sulfus, looking for some help, but he's going to get 2v1 here at the Power Weapon. Raz, meanwhile, will have a numbers advantage here on the opposite side of the map. Rush, he's going to get down there with a Lancer Fire. Nobody in the area for the revive, so he's going to get picked off. And I mean, with the amount of time left on this hill, I don't think Raz has any issue rotating over. They're still going to be doubling it up. Now, and I thought right now that was going to be a great play from Solfus going across, but it gets taken down by Enzum rather quickly, unable to hold his position. Now with the 3v2 on this side of the map, those players at least have to distract them while their two teammates are taking a 2v2, but everybody from Rise is backtracking. They're playing defense, playing for that position, and to pepper up their opponents, whether it's the pistol, the lancer, they just want to make every single inch that much harder. As Detox not throwing one, but two frags to get two different eliminations. Smoke's doing what he can across the map. He gets one to one to a Vex. He's trying to get the spawn point, but he loses yet another teammate while all the action's going down. Rushies, he's the last line of defense on the spawn up until that moment. Everybody on the side of Rise playing this to perfection with team play in mind. You can see what Detox is going to do here. Push up to the bottom side of that stairwell. Vexies is going to need some help here. He's going to run out. He's going to get the head down kill there on to Danger Danger, who is in the danger zone. I believe Danger is, uh, you know, you know, he's putting himself in bad spots early in this one. He continues to do so. Avexi's with a second here. Two plays in front of him. Sulfus and Danger. Big first shot by Avexi's. Double bounces. Rap shots in for the down. Sulfus is there for a possible revive. And he's actually going to leave everybody. Okay, he's going to leave Avexi's down and allow his teammate to roll in. Detox, we're going to call out the two players. Now three. Pushing into the hill. Maybe going for a decap, but... Jacob, you're down to nine seconds, give or take, by the time you win this rotation. What was the point? Colin, they built their houses out of paper. There is no point. A big bad wolf called Rise is just walking in and taking one mighty blow to take their houses down. And it doesn't matter if it's 10 seconds. Like I said, Avexis, he's looking for MVP type season. That means taking out everybody in your path as he takes down Not Call. And it wasn't even for anything. No points, no hill, no weapon. It's just to say that he could do it no matter when and where on the map as Detox. Him and his teammate being pressured. Twerk towards his backside. He's going to survive because of a team kill forced out by Inzum. Big Torquebo shot across the top. Won't be able to find the first one. Now it looks like Casa de Papel is going to push back in. Not Claw's going to go away from that fight as he see Danger falls and drops. See what they do is, again, another couple of kills come through for Rise. Crossing that 155-point threshold, needing 150 to go before they are able to win this map number one. Still getting back into the 100 point club area. 20 points left. Could get him just there, just netting that. Down comes through on Inzem in the backside. Inzem bouncing around, gonna change over to the Nasher. Will get the first shot off, but not get a chunk. Danger trades out with Rushies, and now Rushies goes in for the revive. One more shot from Danger, gets another chunk, but he tries to roll away. Not enough, not in time. 15 seconds left, and Rise, they're gonna roll on over to the next hill. They say, look, you can have those trash points. You can have the scrap time, because we want the rotation. We want the next hill. We want to put ourselves in the best spot to get a kill. Detox here, sneaky, sneaky on the first. Body shot on the second. He's going to get run up on, but he gets out of the stun for two. He gets two, and Avexis is there for the three and four. They want more. Clean up after clean up. Call them the custodians. Get a mop and a bucket, baby, because there's nothing but blood around. 
smokes better be careful here colin he's just going a little bit too early rest of the team though slowly but sure the catching up trying to close the distance rushies with a counter flash to try to slow him down even longer they spot a vex he's out in the corner the flashes are still there by rise to stop every single player from pushing forward and now sofa's oversteps everybody oversteps the only one kind of able to get anything working is going to be danger who immediately get shut down rise they're able to win that battle while pressuring everywhere on the map torque bows up that one still might go over to casa de papel but the position the points the frag grenades he's going to be in the rise's hands and their ability to back off this hill if they want see danger looking across that map he's going to rev up that force torque bow shot not going to hit one there teammates are going to have to get the double shot for the kill but it looks like rise is pressuring back up the hill you're having to fight uphill through the snow with no shoes because you're down 210 to 75 and you're losing members left right they're getting shot in the eye Sophus, he's gonna try to get behind that pillar but it'll be a dither because he'll go down like a clown trying to run away from a three ring circus because these boys they're putting on a show and it's entertaining as all get the hell out i tell you that much jacob uh, clown they're just the main attraction here calling they're the whole they're the whole shebang. Detox going down. That's just a sacrifice. Slowing down two different players. Not allowing them to rotate over so they can make this 3v1 play on the other side of the map. For the spawn point, that much easier. And as soon as they do, they disperse outward, trying to put themselves into a great position. All that communication, Detox from the flank is just listening. Trying to figure out where the play is. That's going to be a down onto one. Rushies is going to fall, but Detox is going to cement his position here with two quick eliminations. Make it three with the help of Inzim as they're looking for number four here. Smoke's going to be backed up. So even if he survives, they did their job on the side of Rise, backing everybody from Costa de Papel out. Hey, man, growing up in baseball, I had a, there was a thing that we had. If you were beating a team by 15 after three innings, we called it the mercy rule, all right? I mean, at what point are we saying, y'all got to give them a kill? Give them something. Let them have something to feel good about going into map two. Or if you rise, do you just get... Hey, man, Alexis, that's twice now. He has been there with a save of the day like Superman with a cape on. He has been doing anything and everything to be the kryptonite to Casa de Papel. These boys are looking like they are getting put up against the entire Justice League with the way everybody from Rise is playing like superheroes. I, I love that. Man, like superheroes, not wanting to really let up off the gas. Two more downs coming in from Avexis. Nobody able to get those revives. Make it number three as they shut down the entire squad of Casa de Papel yet again. And this is just something that you don't see very often to where I kind of alluded and hinted this is what I wanted to see out of Rise. No matter who they're going up against, the best of the best or anybody underneath those players that they have to have that consistency, the same pressure and the same get the job done mindset no matter who it is. And with a hundred... 200 point lead for Rise. Another twerk bow gonna be cemented for Detox. They're gonna close out Nate. Game number one, almost flawlessly barring any miracles. Hey, yo! <laughs> Rushes with a nade, right. Detox with the torque. Inzem does it with the Nasher after the downtown Julie Brown. Nine minutes and 35 seconds. They put a hurting on him. Them boys must have done some push-ups before that match started. Because right, oh yeah, look at Detox. He said, you talking about lifted waist, baby? Yeah, let me get my pump on real quick. Let me show you how just how big and bad we could get. I God only knows, my man. It looked like, like it had to be. 75, 105, 125. I don't how about know this? what how about it was. This? <laughs> Jacob, how about how about it weighs as much as the entire Casa de Papel team? Because he just put them boys on a rack and put them up 33 times for a new record. I'm telling you, Rise looking fantastic. That's what? Is that how many? Let me see how many maps they played. Four maps in this. Yep. In this pro league split, and they they won. Four maps? This pro I'm, they going for five and six here in a minute. I'm not the best man in map, but I tell you, I can at least get to five on one hand. Honestly, this, this is a show that Rise is putting on right now against Casa de Papel. Especially, that was just a defining victory. Like I said, it doesn't matter who they're going up against. Rise, this is the season. These are the moments that they really have to cement themselves as one of the best teams in Gears Esports. And it has to continue past the regular season, though. It has to bleed through into the playoffs. It has to go over to that major to where they're just fighting for not only that prize money, the trophy, the bragging rights, but it does start in moments like this at the very beginning beginning of the game rise were able to take go over and kind of not let loose 
And they did. I mean, they didn't slow down. I, I'm going to always love that. Avexi's understood his positioning, understood that he could get that kill. Little slow mo on him for another kill. I mean, Raz just looked impressive. It looked like they, that Casa de Papel at times didn't understand what was happening to him. Yeah, I mean, it's like you ever been, you ever thought, you ever walked into history class and they handed you an Algebra 2 test and you were like, wait a minute. Wait a minute, that's what just happened to Casa de Papel. They thought they were getting tested on U.S. history, and they got a test that was Algebra 2 and some trigonometry. They weren't prepared. That's <laughs> at the end of the day. That's all it is, because I don't think I'm going to be prepared for no trigonometry either. As Honestly, you, you can kind of see his detox rushies the power weapon control the aggressiveness they didn't really let up off the gas like we keep saying and against casa de papel i don't think they have the experience and the teamwork to kind of plan for a long run like that against a team like rise but i will say on a map like canals on where it's a little bit closer on a mode like execution this might be their silver lining and i say might because colin i trust you what what do you think i don't think it is just because at the end of the day You've still got to worry about that long shot in the hands of any given player on the side of Rise of my I mean, that is just that's going to be the thing that you're going to have to overcome is whether or not you can stop that long shot from being as devastating as it almost always is. Especially, I mean, like, think about it. You either got to, what are you going to do? Pick your poison. You're going to play up on a guy like Detox probably in the middle of the map. You're going to play up on Inzem. You're going to let, you're going to let Avexis have the, the long shot for free. What are we, what are we doing here, boys? Somebody on that coaching staff needed to have a much better chit chat with this entire roster because right now it looked like they came into this thing not aware of the strengths of Rise. And it seems like they've played into all of them. Yep, and that aggressive nature, and this is the thing. You know Vex is going to pick up that sniper. You know how dangerous he can be? And unless you don't have that same fire to kind of match for it on the side of Costa de Papel, that's where it's really going to get even harder on a map like Canals. And I think that's why Rise might pick or at least one of the reasons is because if your sniper's not hitting shots, whether body shots, headed shots, you're realistically in a 4v3 position. You're forcing them to kind of give up the sniper and get aggressive. But Rise, that's kind of the hand you were talking about. They want them to get aggressive. They want them to fight fire with fire because those are also the style of fights that they want. So honestly, this is going to be a real interesting one to see what Costas de Papel has underneath their sleeve for this Rise roster who's already looking good from yesterday looking good after one map a scary team today definitely a scary team I mean Nightmare on Elm Street scary I'm really curious to see like you said how Casa de Papel wants to take these fights because I mean let, let's say you push up to the mid bridge you try to pull it into the CQC you give up those extra lanes I think Rise is smart enough to roll away from you let you have the mid bridge and then just say look if you want the nades and you want the mid bridge, we'll damage you out. We'll get a, maybe a sniper body shot. Let somebody get an easy down. If they play the snipe game, they play the long game, come through back connector. You're going to have to go up against three of the best movement players in history. And one of the best CQC fighters I've probably ever seen in rushes. I mean, at the end of the day, he might not have the, the movement and we might not talk about his movement like we do some others, but Rushy just understands. You can see it, his mind working all the time, how many pellets he has hit, how much damage he's put out so that he knows, all right, maybe I'll up a this. No, maybe I can back a this. Maybe I can play this a little bit slower because he's never put himself in really bad positions or ugly positions. And I give a shout out to all the coaches he's had in his history I mean think about some of the legendary players that have stood around and behind him even next to him you've got a guy like ribs that has probably taught him how to roll back more than you can imagine you've got you in that mix you've got a affinity in that mix fatal strikes and I mean he's got everybody he's been taught and been around every smart player in history you're saying he knows how to back row. That's what you're saying. He knows how to get himself Be smart. out of those sticky situations. Honestly, that's exactly what you're going to do. Even though I think Rise is going to start off with a kind of base strat. They're going to do the two towards low side. They're going to have Vexies grab the sniper. Rushies towards the high side. But I know they like to be one of those first teams. They'll switch up the strategy. Send three players in the water with Vexies watching over the top. They try to get the torque bow. They like to have Vexies kind of, kind of play himself out. He plays a little bit of that flex role. If he gets the damage he wants, they allow him to get loose and kind of clean up those 11 nominations for the inexperienced Casa de Papel after losing that first map you kind of see that you kind of have your work cut out for you here in this matchup but I, I kind of even think it even though I said fire with fire going up against rise kind of playing in their hand I think that's the only thing that you're going to have really to kind of go up against them because as a new team you might not have the strategy you might not have the IGL with the experience to make the adaptation play calls in that right moment as the game progresses so it might have to start with getting first blood and assessing the situation from there but I, but I know that's not going to be an easy task for anybody.
No, not at all. And and again, I harken back. I think I think right now they've got to lean on to Sulfus. I think Sulfus had some okay. of their better plays for map one. He was very aggressive in certain situations, and he did come away with a couple of good kills. He came away with a couple of kills that might be able to buy you a man advantage in a couple of different situations, maybe make it 4v3, maybe make it 4v2, whatever it might be. Sulfus was incredible for you in map one. He has a chance to do it again in map two, so I think there's a real opportunity or the team of Costa de Papel to maybe lean into one player, be their power player, see if he can make some advantages come through for you, and then see if Rise has an answer, how to play around that, how to give yourself a better opportunity, a better chance, because as it stands right now, I mean, I don't want to harp on it too much, but Rise styled on him. I mean, that's the only way I can word that in map one. Styling and profiling, kind of. Limousine riding, high flying. <laughs> Jet flying, I, I, don't, I don't know the whole line like oh, you do, oh. damn. Come on now, come on now. If you're going to quote the greatest of all time, the GOAT, the 16-time I did, I did world quote. champion. I did the headline quote. I, I didn't do okay. the whole. All right. Hey, I, all right. I mean, like, that'd be like if somebody was like, if you smell, and then just left it at that. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that one. What is it? If you smell them? If you smell what the rock is cooking. If you just said if you smell, you don't say what the rock is cooking. You might not understand just how prominent, just how high flying you were like, that man was. Right now, Costa de Papel hey, is hey, smelling. Hey, like hey, hey, yo, hey, hey, yo, hey, yo. I'm like, Whoa. hey, yo. Probably somebody yeah. left, somebody <laughs> left the Basura trash can lit up, and I'm telling you, got that, is that what got that trash can lit wide open? You got some moldy eggs in that sucker. You ain't make no egg salad sandwiches. You just made. Ugh. You know what I'm saying? Smell bad in here. Smell bad. Make you <laughs> make you gay. Stop too. <laughs> Ow. Oh no! We ain't talking about no the, truck. the truck stop egg salad, oh. Sammy. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> Rise planted that one. They gave it to him. It wasn't even a part of the restaurant. They just planted it there. Maybe they'll take the bait. Like Wally Coyote going up against the road runner. They're just setting a trap. And he's just taking it himself. But honestly, all jokes aside, though, I, I think Casa de Papel. In order to win this match, they have to end it. As quick as possible. I think for them to win this match, it's going to be under seven minutes total. If it goes longer Whoa. than seven minutes total, this is Rise. I I was thinking about that in my head for a second. I was like, under seven minutes? I was like, yeah, you got to win six rounds. So you're probably going to take like 30 to 45 every time. So yeah, you could probably add an extra, extra minute you have or two to. there. Yeah, you're, you're not going to be as quick as six minutes. I was about to say, could you imagine we set a world record on them? No, come on now. Come on now. I'm about to hit the timer, bro. Hold on. I'm about to hit the timer. Just in case. Is it, just, is it just in case. Map total or is it round total? Do you take even I, the time between rounds? I, I was thinking the, the whole time since when we hit that fly through, you could hit the timer right then and there. You hit the fly through. If this goes longer than seven minutes, it's a rise. And the reason being, though, honestly, is because you, you said it yourself without actually saying it. You kind of mentioned rushies. You kind of mentioned the amount of, of greatness he was surrounded by. And then I, I talk about Avexis having the MVP style season. You know why Detox was here. And when Icy retired, you know exactly why they went to Inzem and knew exactly who they wanted to complete that piece of the puzzle. The longer you give these guys the thing to work, to give Sniper opportunities to Avexis, opportunities to grab the Twerk Bow, if they back them down off the frags, you're just kind of handed over to rise in a silver platter. So even if you can kind of end rounds in 10 seconds 15 seconds you got to expect rise to be able to win some of those rounds so like i said the longer it goes you're just allowing them to think you're allowing it to play directly into his hands and it's kind of very very similar to when franchise was on this roster you don't want to give franchise time to think the more time he has to think the more time he's going to plan your demise it without a doubt i mean that is that is a that is a that is a legitimate possibility that we may see here in map two. And then just to give y'all an update, we are just waiting on the players to start it. Look, I know I really need to just bring home that staples that was easy button. So I can just put the word start on it instead of easy so that I could just be like, look, you want me to start the game, press the button, and then be like, it ain't happening. It ain't, I don't know how to do it. I can't my button don't work the way your button does. You know, you know what buttons do work though? Which ones? The, the A button. That usually works in gears. A button's usually a pretty good button to go with. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. When in doubt, A button it out. You know what I'm saying? Like Up A. A, back A, side A, reaction A, miss roll A sometimes will save you if you ask Kenny Bounce. That's one of my, I want you to know some of my favorite uh, moments is by just using the letter A as my excuse for things where like, I'll miss a shot and I'll be like, hey! People be like, what do you mean? I'll be like, I didn't hit A enough. I didn't hit A enough. I hit it like seven. I needed to hit it eight or nine. It needed to be eight or nine. I could have gotten it double digits. Oh, man. Oh, I want to see you all bounce. I want to see you all bounce again. We play, we, we so, play sometime this week. 
hey, look, I'm I'm still trying to convince the pioneers to let me play one E days. <laughs> I'm like, like, let me get one. Let me get one map. Hey, buy right? me a sub tomorrow. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm That's ready. Right. I got chains for everybody. Hey, man. I forgot. Tomorrow is Thursday. In my brain, I'm like, is tomorrow Thursday? In my calendar, I'm... my fridge tricks it. So, so in in my head, when you look at a calendar, Sunday is the first day of the week. Am I wrong? Is your calendar like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. So my fridge calendar is, is I got it from, you know, off discount. You know, rightfully so. You get what you pay for, a discount. Monday starts the week, and it throws me off, man. I, I, I want to scribble out Monday and just put my own Sunday in there. My own Sunday. Hey, look, I, I always, I always like the fact that my calendar starts with Sunday because it's the day of rest for me, and I'm like, I got to start off with rest because I'm a fat boy. You can't just start a fat boy off going 100 miles an hour. I need that day of rest. I can tell you that much. I'm curious. You know, maybe there's a chance we get a peek at a side station matchup. Oh, oh no. Oh, did I hear those magic words? Are those magic words to you? Those else. are magic. We got a those, chance for. Those are magic words to me. I'm telling you that right now. Please let these players have gotten these weapon selections right. No debated. We're out here. Okay. I'm praying. Ooh, fly through. So pretty. Timer started. House. Timer started. What if we pull it back? Does that go against us? Uh, If, if the game doesn't restart, no. We'll leave it to our, our admin team. They got double work today. Double work? God. Yeah. They already work hard enough. Leave Hunter alone. Triple work for Hunter. Oh, 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 goalie. Oh, no. Had to hit him with a, yo, hit him with a whole 18 wheeler. Somebody catch the freaking license plate on that truck. All right, well, then who is Crow? Crow. Is Crow one? Not me. Not me as in Crow. The uh, the real Crow. I'm the, I'm the imposter Crow. He's the real Crow. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. What did I miss? Um, we might be having a sidebar, so I'm sorry. It might okay, be. I'm, about to, I'm about to say, y'all went right over my... I know I'm short, but that went over my head quicker than normal. <laughs> Coming in around number one, rolling out in the middle of the map. It is going to be Detox going into that mid-bridge fight like originally thought. Early kill coming in on this Sulfus, though. The player that I thought they might be able to rely on a little bit. Now you're going to see more body shots coming out, more attempted headshots coming out from Rise. They're going to be pushing in through this back connector. You see two players stacked up. Are they, is he baiting for a Vex? He's right there. Is that what that is? Yep. Where he was stacking up on him? He's trying to at least give him a shot. Opportunities. Ends him feeling himself. Tries to push down low. He ends up on the receiving end of a twerk bow. Kind of narrowed down to a 3v3 situation there. And Smokes catches the Vexies off guard. Both those players missing their power weapon shots. And the splash damage is there. Detox rush. He's taking out Nar Claw. That's going to give the man advantage on over to Rise. Double up. So as danger goes down, Smokes has no choice but to get offensive against a Vexies. Lancer over the top. That's going to make that body shot that much easier. Tries to catch Rush. He's off guard, but almost puts himself into a corner there. Almost gets beheaded as well. Tries to route that twerk bow. Detox from the backside, middle bridge. Everybody getting a piece of that one in the end. Rise go up one to zero. 3v1 ain't easy for nobody, and that's just proven right there even further with that win going over to Rise. Does that boil down to that early pick by by uh excuse me, by Avexis with the sniper, the, that first initial pick picked up? What do you mean, Avexi? That was that was detox. Just detox. Chunk the guy. That's right. You're right. Steam the yes, the RCS, yes, because I feel like Horse if Casa de Papel lose a guy early, they're gonna feel pressured to make a move early. So even though they don't have to, you know as well as I do, canals you can kind of back up, you can force people in those close corridors. But this time around, they have more time to work with. Opus tries to go back onto the middle bridge. This time he gets burst blood on the detox. Avexi's over the top, unable to find a shot. Continues on to the two v two. Rushies drops. Ends up drops. Vexies goes down. This could be a big round for Casa de Babel, and it is. They tie it up at one round apiece. Good job getting that round under their belt, and it is a quick round. 29 seconds. I mean, that goes back to what you were saying. They have to win very quickly, very succinctly. They cannot allow Rise to get these rounds elongated, giving you the chance to rotate around. We go to the live replay. Beautiful kill there by Sulfus. Now the body shot attempted. But the double shot shotguns in the area just too strong right there for Casa de Papel. They come away with the kills when necessary. Say, I just gotta try to win these rounds quick. Don't give Rise too much time to work with, too much time to think about what's going wrong. Nice shot by Solfus. Oh my god, saved by a Vexies. The halo around his head, sanding bright as can be as he hits another body shot on the smokes. Gave him credit for two kills so far as he lines up a third, misses that narrow shot onto danger. But I think he cemented Rise's position in this round. Looking across, Danger's going to see that first fragmentation grenade come in. He's going to get taken out, at least of the fight. He's going to roll back. 
Danger with a long shot now bouncing around, trying to make a highlight real play happen, but they just encroach on him. They let him have it. They get very close to him and take him down and out. Two to one now. Score back over in favor of Rise. I, I thought he was going to be hit able to hit him with the one-two punch. You know, hit him with the jab, knock him out with the haymaker. The Vexies, man. From one map to the next, he just doesn't give up. No reason to ever give up if you're one of those players on Rise, as you know just how incredible each one of you are. Coming into round number four now, rolling out a spawn. Coming to the front side of the ledge, it's going to be Detox once again against Sulfus. Players with hands in front of your faces. Detox with a double bounce, gets the first one. Now Smoke has to roll out, has to try to roll back. Rushies has found himself a kill as well. Looking across the middle, Danger will find himself in a 4v1 this time, and that is a never good. Double melee, bro. As, honestly, that, that double melee from Rushies right there from the backside, instead of even going for a shot, just, just goes to show what the strategy from Rise is. You know what that strategy is? Kill them before they kill you. It's execution. Exactly. Wait, what? Oh, sorry. Just, just go ahead. Just, just do whatever you guys want. They saw what happened on the first map. After the, Halfway through the first map, I, I guarantee they shifted into that style of play. Do whatever you want. Just make sure that you're trying 110%. So I don't want to say that Ryze isn't trying, but they're literally doing anything that they want here. And you see the switch up of strategy. Two players up top from Casa de Papel. They're trying to make Rushy that easy target in the beginning. Great shot's going to be landed. First blood is going to go to Casa de Papel. Big body shot there by Avexis. Will tie it up as a second kill starts to come through here. He's going to look for another one. Has to avoid the long shot. And will end up getting taken down by the back A there on that pillar. Another round of the book for Casa de Papel. They find a way to get one step closer. This is only five rounds deep, though, of a possible 11. Casa de Papel has to win another one before they can hopefully tie it up. Hopefully, maybe, probably. Who knows? Unless I die. Don't do that. Just trying to look, see if anybody's switching it up here. Got Casa de Papel doing it once more. Two from up top, two from down low. Rise this time around, sending two players up top. What is going to be consistent is a Vexies watching over those frag grenades, trying to be that guardian angel for Detox. Nobody really able to kind of pressure up top, so that one's going to go over to Rise. All the position realistically going over to Rise, and it's going to make grabbing that torque bow hard for Casa de Papel, but if they have some smokes, they have some flashes, it's definitely possible. Vexy's looking across the middle of the map here toward the torque bow. I don't believe he sees anybody just yet, so we'll have to try to come away with a big shot, but I, I think they have called him out. That's what that indication was. That little snub fire is just him letting his teammates know, hey, one player is here. Got to keep our eye on that pillar. Unsure if it's the long shot player. I mean, I don't know if they have that intel at least, but they do know that at least one player is there. I would say for Costa de Papel, even though they don't have much, they at least still have all four players alive. And just one moment, you know as well as I do, it just takes one big play with that sniper, connect with a headshot, and turn the tides as the Vexy's trying to hunt some players down. He's getting the information on over to him by Enzim. You see Rise with the position they already have, continuously trying to back these players down, not giving up anything. A nice shot on the Detox. Enzim bites off more than he can chew. Vexies, he's trying to take care of that early damage. Another frag grenade from Detox. Rushies goes down, so it's up to these two guys. Detox and Vexies. now it's only up to Vexies. Talk about the MVP season he's trying to have. He has that 1v Astro Battles Championship, and now he has one heck of a job up in front of him. 1v2 situation. In this 1v2 battle of Exy's bottom side of the bridge, they're trying to look over the top and get the shot onto him. He has to stay at least in an area, maybe challenge up that hill. We'll pick up the torque bow here. I like that play because it might give him a chance to rev that quick active and get a shot to make sure nobody stands into that hill. One second to go. Avexis bounces in but cannot get it done. Got closer than a hell of a lot of other people would have though and I love the effort. Very gamey by Avexis to continue to apply pressure in this map and in this round. You see him having to push forward into that final hill in the final moments of that round not coming through for him. A great attempt by Avexis. One of the best movement specialists we have in the league. Able to get that first one. Unfortunately, he kind of bounces right into the arms of danger. But we got a game all tied up at three rounds apiece. This is where I feel like if you're rise, you got to stop playing with your food. You got to start tightening up, minimizing the mistakes here. Detox able to take that middle bridge, regaining his health in the process. Position, not giving up towards the top side. Casa de Papel learning from their mistakes round after round. 
Coming in this next round, you see everybody looking across and nobody giving up their positioning just yet. Over to the side of Rise. Detox has been called out. Middle bridge. Body shot onto him. One player defending up, but the headshot comes through for Avexis. That gives him the onus to take over the back connector, but without a doubt, now you'll see players start to rotate in because they have the torque boat, so they might have a chance to come into this. He's got headshotted, but it's only one player down. Danger needs to go big. He has to take his 1v1 while he can because reinforcements are on the way. And that's why we say timing is crucial. Rise, they get that last elimination. They go up four to three, step by step. They're trying, like I said, to tighten things up. They're trying to minimize these mistakes. And, and one of the mistakes that we're having, we're just kind of getting a little bit too aggressive, getting too loose as individuals. But as soon as they switch it up, play a little bit closer together and realize the advantages, they're able to secure that round. Coming into the next round here, rolling off of Spawn. We're going to be on board with Rise still here. Coming out, trying to make sure they go up 5-3, to three, not giving too many rounds over to Casa de Papel. Detox will jump over the front side of the bridge. Call out is through onto him. He gets lancered out just a little bit. Danger tries to go for the body shot, maybe get it down there. It looks like one player already pushing up through back connector onto Avexis. Avexis has to be curious about his positioning as multiple players are playing through that back side of the map, Jacob, and he has to understand that positioning and know that he gets the call out through. Yeah, Rise, you kind of have that strategy. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Asadeh Papel forcing up the strategy change. Rushy's going down low this time around. But the biggest difference here is even though he went down low, he gets that twerk, but able to pull up the elimination. Vexies with the blind fire shot. Almost getting away with murder there in that situation. Things not looking good as all the options slowly but surely being pulled underneath Rise here. A quick torque attempt coming out from Rush. He's unable to connect. Gets body shotted. Very, very close. And this is where if you have your 3v2, you should try to push towards the top side, but it's not going to be an easy push. Sniper, one body shot gets you full red. It's going to force the chain revives out, so it's not going to be as easy as it looks. But as long as you're prepared, the timing is right. It could be good. Body shot's going to land onto Enzum. He's going to get traded out. Detox is going to drop. Enzum gets dropped shortly after. Sulfa steps up to the plate. He makes the play. Rushy's with the splash damage, but it's not going to be enough. Danger with the last elimination, and it comes at a tie. Four rounds apiece. Costa de Papel versus Rise. Costa de Papel has to be thankful that they were close enough to one another to get that kill because I believe Rushies was setting up that easy chunk there. Sulfus, I said before the match, they had to lean into him, lean on to him, and they have done a fantastic job of that because he has continued to be kind of the tip of the spear for them in every way, shape, form, and fashion in this matchup. As we continue to look over that final replay, you can see Rush, he's thinking, he said, this is an easy kill on the miss roll, but quick little rotation over by Danger helps him get that secured final kill. Look at the strategy, cost of fell, trying to put some pressure on to Rushy's. Great flash from Detox. That's going to back him up. But Rushy's, did he back up too far? He might have, because Detox went in. He's going to go down. Rushy's trying to avenge his fallen teammate, but both of them are going to be dropped. But it's a Vexies every single time. You have to save a teammate. You can bet on a Vexies to make the play. Now it's a 3v1 with Rise at the advantage, and a Vexies does it again. Gets the headshot to give Rise the go-ahead round. And Rise now on map point. They are now one round away from a 2-0 lead over the side of Casa de Papel. And that has got to be feeling great for them and their fan base. And I mean, without a doubt, I think it's even got to be feeling greater because of Vexies has done such an amazing job of being there for every single one of his teammates whenever necessary. Coming out into this next round, round number 10. Looks like Rise will be pushing toward the middle of the map in the attempt to maybe take over that mid bridge. Here comes the flashes. Detox will get a double flash in. Down comes through from the Lancer. Maybe a long shot shot as well. Not Claw. Bouncing around, trying to stay alive as long as possible. Vexies gets missed there by Danger. But the kills in the middle of the map still ring true and ring through. Rise, they are in a 3v1 for a 2 0 lead over Casa de Papel. What, what did I tell you, Con? If this goes longer than seven minutes, Casa de Papel. Ain't gonna be able to win it. You give Rise too much time to think with. But I might be wrong. I'm out of curse to Vexies. He goes down in the blink of an eye. Danger with another opportunity. Great body shot on to Rushies. Trying to back him off. Rushies, though, he has that frag grenade. Danger oversteps. That could be his life. But a 1v2 situation. He alleviated some of the pressure. Now it's up to Inzim and Rushies to close it out. Otherwise, we're gonna go to a round number 11. We're going to try to get this final kill. Bounce it around mid-bridge. The body shot misses there. Danger bouncing back to the backside of the connector. Rushies, I believe, is in 
a very sneaky, very dangerous position. He's trying to just sneak him here with those frags. Shot on, won't be able to get the kill with either of the frags. Bouncing around, Danger tries to get one, won't be able to get it. Beautiful job there. Love the fact that he stayed alive for as long as he did, but I mean, Rise wasn't going to give him nothing. Nah, they didn't give them nothing. Six to four, making sure they kept their team-oriented pressure. And when it mattered most at the end of the day, switching up their strategies as soon as Casa de Papel reached that halfway mark. So they're going to go up six to four, take the map number two, and go up two to zero in the series. Will Casa de Papel show any life? We'll figure out on the other side of this commercial break. Coming in with this 2-0 map count lead for Rise. They are looking to shut things down in map number three. But Jacob, take me through map number two. What do you think was the biggest key to success? Do we just go back to the old song and dance? Is it still the quarter in the jukebox machine of Avexis being there for anyone and everything at any time, all the time, forever and ever? I mean, yeah, Vex, you see how many times he's saved plays, he's saved rounds, and you got to imagine he's got to be one of those driving forces for the strat change, sending rushes down low, because it's no coincidence they start to change things up when it's three rounds apiece. Like I said, their experience is going to shine and bleed through against this Casa de Propel roster. And experience has won them the day thus far. And now, I mean, you talked about not being able to have momentum. You can't give up the momentum over to Rise going into map three. We go to Harbor now with Rise coming away with, I believe, enough momentum off of that map one trouncing and then at least winning map two by a couple of rounds. Six to three, I believe, the final score line. So they've got to have the momentum in their favor, correct? Yeah, they have to have, all, I mean, I'm going to say yes, because in general, I was going to say they have to have everything kind of going in their favor, because even when the going got tough, they kept it pushing, they kept it moving, and like I said, even though this is Casa de Papel, this is still one of those matchups for Rise, you have to still assert your dominance, you cannot let up off the gas and allow any doubts to creep in. We'll see if the doubts start to creep in again. I don't think any doubts could have crept in on Rise. I mean, they were playing picture-perfect teamwork all map long. You're going to see it in so many different shape, forms, and fashions in these replays. That final kill to me still talks about, I still want to talk about that final kill. The way that Danger was trying to play his life as long as he did and stay alive and the old rise, the rise that we I always get concerned with maybe would have put themselves in chunkable range. Shout out Taylor Reflections Noble one time. They would have maybe put themselves in a bad sp spot to maybe get one shot killed, but instead, Rise, they said, nope, we're staying away from you. We're making you make the move. We're making you make the play. And we're going to stay just outside of that range, just in the nick of time. We're going to get the down for the out and get the kill for the hill and the win. Well, not a hill, but, you know. For the thrill, yeah, no, the I, there we go. I, I know, I know what you mean, but I, but I like the way you kind of point that out because those are the moves and the tactics that you have to practice not only in scrims but in these easier matchups of the season to make it muscle memory because those are the same tactics that you see the Kansas City Pioneers do when they have every single advantage. They're known for their aggression, but a lot of people don't give them enough credit for when they back roll. They use their team fire, their lancer players out, and it's just that annoying gameplay to play against. So if Rise can continue to do that against these teams like Casa de Papel and the kind of earlier, easier rosters that they might go up against. It just makes it that much more easier for them to have it muscle memory. It's easier to react. And then we talk about having the greatest teamwork to where you don't even have to talk to each other. You just know exactly what each other are going to do. Hey, look, it's kind of like you and I, right? Not going to even have to talk about it. We know what one... We know where each other is going to move at all safes and times. I'm not going to lie to you. I may or may not have thought I messed up my beam brother i'm telling you <laughs> i i i thought i thought i lost you too and you went quiet my eyes just like shifted like one of them suspicious dogs like wait a minute somebody take calling away from me I, I started shifting left and right in my room looking light to light hey look i've been feeling so good about how how well i've done technologically wise over the last three weeks that i knew something was gonna happen i knew something was gonna go down i was feeling too good about myself i said yep i gotta mess something up sooner or later harbor though is gonna be a map that's really hard for rise to mess up in my book i think they have got such a good understanding of how to play this map whether it be that mid winch control giving them the advantageous positions or simply having to fight back against the tide when they lose that and have to play up toward the top of the hill. We go to that initial fight here at the winch, though, rolling out of this position. Rushies will get the first shot on. Not Claw returns by with a big body shot. Here comes Detox for the Gefilta Fish. Gets the first down and the out. Now a second. Salt is by himself in what is a 3v1 up here. 
already. Dano snap from the team off of the boat. Maybe they can come back in five years or maybe five seconds off a of respawn, but the pressure is there regardless from Rise. 2v1, not letting them in that home hill. Danger is being denied. Entry from the club as well. Everybody's going down. Rise from start to finish. Trying to put their dominance, but I might have spoke too soon. One goes down on towards the hill. Detox has no choice but to backtrack into Enzum, but he's even going to get dropped. Enzum's forced to go ahead and save his teammates, so the pressure is there. They can still turn nothing into something but it all decides here can rushies win this battle but no sophis takes him down so that's gonna be a quick turnaround for casa de papel looking to try to continue to turn this around but oh my goodness of xy's just flying through that kill no way, shape, form, or fashion about it he wants through that first kill now he's trying to worry about a second you see the shots over the top Big wrap by Inzem right there, playing defensively. Needs to hit a big body shot there, and he does! Wow, he allows the teamwork to come through from that winch fight, and beautifully done by Inzem. Gets yet another kill. The pressure is on every single hill at this moment against the side of Costa de Papel. But Rise is sitting pretty up 100 points here. And you can already see where Casa de Papel is putting their numbers. They're trying to go for some sort of down low push. And they have three versus three there. Rushy's directly off of respawn trying to impact this fight. One down is going to go through. But Rushy's, he's actually trying to go for that Mr. Krabs play. And decap the home mill of Casa de Papel. And make an even bigger point disparity between the two. So even though they captured the neutral, they still down one hill to one. Make it two to one as soon as Rushy's gets this capture. And they even have a 2v1 in spawn. If Exes and Rushy's in some season. He he hears the communication. He's just trying to backtrack knowing it's all hills over kills for Rise as long as they can hold on to these last two. Make it one. Even though if they lose A, they're still going to be good off of C, but it all comes down to Enzim and the plays that he can make, and he does! He's the last line of defense, and sometimes, Colin, that's all you need. All you need is one man to stand tall, stand proud, be loud, get the kills, and secure those hills, and he did just that. Enzim, fantastic job in that round. In multiple occasions, both times playing defensively, first double and then a second one, just made life oh so hard and oh so miserable on the side of Casa de Papel and then ruins the round for him. So very close to a possible victory, but it is snatched away from them at the last moment by Inzem getting that final kill and then cleaning up the down. Inzem 5 and oh, playing on another level. Good to be back. I'm trying to think, 5 I'm six, like 3,000. He got like 2,100 extra damage around the map. That's kind of not credited towards a full elimination or a kill there. So that's kind of big support fire from that down low position to kind of take note as Rushies, he's going to get dropped first. Detox going to be the last line of defense. He's going to fall. So if Vexy's in a 3v1, it's not long before he meets that same demise. You can see the overextension from Casa de Papel. They're sending two players to try to take on Inzum, another one to try to overextend so they can win off of three hills and they have two opportunities here. One at the neutral hill in the hands of Inzum. Another one onto the home hill and as Rushies goes down, Inzum's gonna befall. It's gonna be all up to Detox. He gets one even. He's pushing Knock Claw back so Rise will live to fight another moment in this round. Looks like Knock Claw trying to push up with two other teammates. They clean up that first one. Detox all by himself in a 3v1. Won't be able to take a second to the grave, but this is Rise's home hill. First flash in by Rushies. Banks it off the cubby. Rolls in. Inzem now has to play hero ball again. He'll go down. Rise will be taken out. This will be tied up in map three, one to one. One big, quick initial fight. They were to get two of them straight onto the wench. They got Vexies trying to be that support pyre over the top and from there it was kind of smooth sailing easy they split their numbers up even to take a 2v1 towards the low side they kept their numbers even going for the home hill great bounce back playing what i like about casa de papel even though it's still two to zero they are two not going down without a fight now they're gonna try again to come away with a round victory against rises i think rises has got to figure out what it is that went wrong that last round to allow the overwhelm from casa de papel and I think they can do it. Again, they, they got to slow it down a little bit, maybe get a couple of kills early because that winch fight is oh so very important. Flashes out by both teams, but Rushies this time will get that first down. No time for a cleanup either. He's going to immediately rotate in alongside a detox. Solfus has to go all the way back to the home hill just to try to keep his team in this round. Danger is slowly but surely going to get Lancered out. Great by Enzum. He's just going to kind of leave him there. Think about his decisions while they go for that triple cap domination. Claw has to go big. A miracle. Yeah! <laughs> Retro charge. There it is. 
You want it, you got, got it. That's, cash in. that's five dollars in the bank, Detox. If you, all you got to do is DM me with your PayPal, I got you. I got you, man. That, look, cash look, in. I look. Ain't nobody done it this pro league split thus far. I know it's only night two, but damn it, that's still long enough to get a retro charge. That's ten dollars. That's a good meal from somebody. Five dollars is a good meal from somebody if you're shopping right. I, you probably shopping a lot better than I am. I'm not gonna lie to you. No, I'm not. I'm not shopping right. Five dollars is not enough. That's not even a side for me. Hey, my man hey, Jacob said man. We, we, we can go to a buffet and have a contest. That's all I gotta say. <sighs> I don't know if I win that buffet contest, boy. I usually fill up on carbs, man. I'm terrible about that. Filling up early and not getting enough out of my plates. Coming into this next one, not claw. He's gonna try to get enough out of his plates. First shot on the rush. He's won't be able to get the kill, but there's the ensign trying to get a burn kill. Now two more players in the area. Not able to clean anything else up. Rushy's all by his lonesome. Three up, three down. And now Inzem all by his lonesome has to try to make a play to buy his team time in this situation as Inzem might get flanked out here in a moment. Two players pushing in past him. Flash will come out, stopping him from getting that first initial kill. Two players versus two there at the home hill. One chunk coming through. First shot in by Detox. Needs the second. Can't get it to go. He goes down. Triple cap domination. Kicks on through. Back and forth we go. Rise, lose round four. And it is all tied up going into the second half. Did this surprise you at all coming out Casa de Papel versus Rise? Because I, I thought this was going to be a little bit different, but honestly, we kind of know that winch fight is so telling over who's able to put the pressure. And if you play your cards right with the right amount of pressure, you can come out with triple cap dominations just like that, especially if you're able to take those players out of the winch in quick succession to get them all off a of respawn together. Shoo-wee! I think what Rise has to be a little bit better about is, is right there in the middle, that instant did not come perfectly through for them. And I, if you're going to rely on that secondary, if you're going to rely on the insta-give capability of the incendiary, you've got to be able to get those kills to go. And instead, you throw it over the top of the winch and don't find anything. All tied up with that second half hill moving up to the top middle. Casa de Papel put down a big team fight weapon there. That's going to be the torque, though, whereas Rise continue to stick it out with the Voltok bottom side of the map. First shot in by Rushies is missed. Second shot connects. Now the rotation in from Detox trying to help out. His little revive. Top side of the map. Avexis might be going for the pick on the torque. Gets it to go, but he's going to get flanked out here momentarily. Triple cap domination for just a moment. But it looks like Casa de Papel had to put all their resources in the top half of the side of the map. Yeah, late rotation, you saw what that kind of does. You're able to keep your numbers alive, get the pressure, the torque on the weapons, but you give up that point. So Inzem right now is going to have his hands full, and you can even see what it's doing. Detox trying to go down low, trying to make sure Inzem has as much fighting chance as anybody else, but he's going to get dropped. Now a late rotation up top into a 2v2. That's going to be even harder and instant to kind of block off any paths and buy them more time for their teammate in danger to rotate over. They're going to try to get maybe another kill here. Sulfus pulls out the torque. Three bolts left in the quiver. Looking for a second kill here to try to continue to secure the shot at Detox. Won't be able to connect. Detox wins a fight at the winch due to the misfire from Sulfus. And that's a huge miss. You can't give those up to him. Detox will make you pay. Of Exis, bottom side of the stairwell. Active out. Shot over the top. Not going to be able to make it just yet. Looks back to Detox. Let's the bolt fly to the bottom. Lancer fire is out. Shot at the corner. Active. Won't find anybody. There's the flash. They need to go for a full team push here. It's going to be a 3v3. Now 4v3 as nobody is guarding the home hill of Rise. So I think Danger will freely take that home hill push from you. And it almost looks like they didn't communicate that well enough. Danger off of respawn immediately goes for the over aggressive play to try to get the home hill to home hill. He kind of leads his team trapped. They're already in a pushed up position. You cannot go for that. So let's see what he can do by himself. How much time can he buy? And the answer is going to be zero. Trapped in the corner. Stuck between a rock and a hard place. Vexies gets the down. Detox on the other side of the map. He doesn't have too much of a cross other than Rushies. And he's going to get dropped as well. I will say, though, Colin, they did exactly what they needed to do in terms of playing the objective. They got the two hills to one. So even though they did lose a player, they set up absolutely perfect to hold on for the rest of this round. Curious if they will be able to hold on here. You see the Lance of Fire out by Inzem. Top side of that ramp. He's going to rotate back. First shock will come out, but Avexis finds Not Claw with a torque. Now the active shot through the middle of those ropes. My goodness gracious, takes his head clean off. And now hits the hip fire. Avexis 
Ortiz is your MVP of this matchup because this bad boy has been three maps with highlight reels consisting of the one and only Adam Another Montage shot there with the blindy torque. And now a fourth. My goodness gracious, good God almighty, scintillating, sensational fashion of Xyz is too strong, too fast, too good. All you can do is hope against hope that he doesn't have you on his list like his name was Santa Claus, but he ain't giving out gifts. He's giving out gibs. Didn't I tell you he was looking for an MVP caliber performance this season? He's not looking to be stopped, and there's very few people here in the league that can stop him. Astro Battles 1v1 proves that. Astro Battles 2v2 proves that. You need a whole army to take down Avexis. I mean, you need a whole lot more than what Casa de Papel just threw at him. That man went nutty, buddy, and comes away with a big round win for Rise, giving him the round right back, the round count back in their favor. We are going live here to round number six. Shots over the top. That flashbang bounces right back into his face, though. Detox and Rushies have to be careful. Getting peppered up here. Team Revives trying to come through and come true. Big shot in. Rushies gets two down. Melee out. Doesn't connect for the kill. Now he's going to be 2 v one here. Everybody Everybody put everything into that round yet again. Casa de Papel is forced to put all four fighters up top simply to win a 3v4. Yeah. It all really matters, Colin, about how much time Inzum can buy the rest of his team to get off a respawn, go toward the top. Everybody knows Inzum should go down here regardless of what happens. It's all bonus, but he gets it down. Inzum almost able to get two, but if Vexy's getting picked off, it's going to be that much harder for Rise, especially now that Detox is going to get dropped. No matter what happens, Rushies meets that same fate. So no matter how many seconds ends them, but it's not going to be enough. They're going for that triple cap domination. Oh Solfus with the pistol, trying to pepper up his opponent in Vexies. The down's going to come through. Short to reach the hill. Casa de Papel will close out the round and continue on with this blow-for-blow -blow style matchup here on Harbor Escalation. If you're Rise, do you start sending four players up top to try to help secure that mid-winch mid no. fight? No. Put something in the middle. Spread them out. All right, I feel you. Hey, I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> the, the reason why I'm saying that, though, give more context to it, is because even though they're winning the up top fight, they're getting the weapon, obviously. You, you kind of want to split it up. Make team, or I was going to say TPH, make the Casa de Papel make a decision. It's like when you're playing basketball and you're playing great defense and you're forcing them to hit the jump shot. Now we'll see what they can do here as the round is off and running. Everybody coming up to that mid-winch fight now. This time it'll be everybody there. Vinzem going down to the bottom of F-Hill once again. So they have both split off a player. Both teams with a down early in this one. Team Revive's coming out. This time Avexi's trying to add in that extra damage. Sulfus is down for a second time. Detox gets the Team Revive there. 2v2 at the bottom winch. Here comes Avexi's once again trying to play hero. Won't be able to get it this time, but... Two will drop. 2v2 at the winch. In Zem, though, gives him the hill advantage. And Detox trades out to the only player left alive off of the initial is Danger with a Torque Bone. That's a much better start for Rise. They don't have to worry about being overwhelmed this round. That's a big W. All caps right there for Rise because now they have to send a player off of respawn to get their home hill back. And as soon as they do, that's going to let them know exactly where these players are at. Great shock and a great chance to kind of hold it for as long as Inzum did for all the way off that initial to bring it towards this fight and like it last towards the mid game. Sofa's going to fall. Danger has no choice but to back up. And it's a great play because he has the torque bow. So they're just taking this moment to breathe, Colin, assess the situation, get the information, let their teammate come off a respawn before they make this push. Talk about that next push. Talk about where they're going to go with it. Danger with the torque bow. Let's see if he can do anything like Avexis did. And get a couple of kills here. Shot toward Inzem is not going to go out just yet. Sees the Lancer fire from the left-hand side. Now tries to pick Inzem. Picture perfect roll at the right moment to get away from the torque bow. First shot gets that kill. Now Danger trying to live here. The body shot's ringing through and true for Casa de Papel. Inzem with a huge down. And you pull. Did you pull that horn in Inzem's face? Did you think you were getting away with that? Inzem said, not today, not now, not ever. Don't you think about it. And it might have been a mistake, but you know, it might have been, you know, it might have been a mistake, but it was a costly one. So I got to call him out on it. I don't know if I would rather on purpose or a mistake, because if that was a mistake, that's scary, because that makes me believe he's nervous. He's nervous, Colin. 
If it's a mistake, he's nervous. He's shaking. That's not what you want to do against Rise, especially if you're going blow for blow. But this decap on the neutral hill is a must. Rise knows they can win off of one, and this is certainly theirs for the taking. It's going to come down to one last team push coming out of Casa de Papel. They're able to get a down onto one. Solfus revived back into it, so not much to worry about just yet. Inzum spots out one. The elimination is going to be cleaned up. Smokes goes down. Vexy's going to get dropped, though. So it's still a 3v3. Detox on the other side of the map. He has a 1v1 against Not Claw. The Lancer fires there. A down's going to come through. And it does come in. Rise will secure this round and go up 4 to 3 over Casa de Papel. One round away from a 3 0 victory for Rise. They have got to be licking their chops about this one. They got to be feeling good about their chances now. I really do. I Like you said, if that's a mistake, and it, it probably is, because I don't think there's any any realm that you do that on purpose. What but are you that's pressing the button for? Uh, defaulting it? Press the, X for the, uh, press the X for the revive there? Maybe you think you're getting what to the revive. revive? And you're, didn't there, wasn't there one player down? Did he, have was, a, he was gone, he was already bro. Dead, already if chunked, he was going already for the revive, already yeah, chunked he, out. he had All lag right. in the brain. I'm trying to make excuses for him. <laughs> I, I don't want to hear no excuses. <laughs> try, I'm just shocked. I'm trying to help my man out. He's fighting for his life that, out here. I almost would rather that to him be showboating against the Vexies. <laughs> I, you can't be nervous in the pro league. You're eating up like the sharks on my shirt. You got sharks on that shirt? Yeah, I'll, I'll show you after. All right, yeah, I'm an yeah, Apex yeah, Predator. Yeah, you know yeah. how I get. Hey, yo, my man in multiple ways an Apex Predator. You know what I'm saying? My man out there swimming with the big shark. Shout out one time, Hudson. I see you, big dog. On the triple cap domination rotation by Inzem, the shock is there. And ladies and gentlemen, you know what falls easier than a house of cards? Well, if it's in front of Rise, it's a house of paper. Casa de Papel, go down three to zero to Rise. Here with five to three is your score for map three. Inzem, your MVP for the map, but I'm sorry, I'm giving the matchup MVP over to over to Avexis. Ain't no doubt about it. That man put on a showcase. Yeah, Vexes is going to be one of those players to watch, one of those players to beat. What he is going to do to some players this season, <clears throat> let me tell you, you better have your eyes peeled. Because <sighs> Rise is here to cement themselves. Perfection! Six maps up, six maps won. I, and that's picture perfect for them. They got to start off, and they got to be able to maintain that momentum. The other thing that I think they got to be able to do is just hold on to the smart plays, continue to do the things that have gotten them to this point in this position because those six maps are all well and good, but if you start to falter, if you start to show shakiness, it's going to mean nothing at this point. It's going to be nothing at all. Three to zero for them. You got to be living at it all time high and honestly i love the way you can give Vexies that the mvp for him this means more than money this is more than just a trophy more than bragging rights this is really to call yourself the best of the best and you're gonna see it here once more in these replays not only from him but great plays like this coming out from inzim to really just cement themselves as the team to beat here in jersey sports I still love the patience by Inzem on that play. The, the way that he was able to play back, wait for the damage to come in, and then go for that big body shot to get that down. Those are the plays that are going to be able to win you fights in, a, in the major when you got to be able to stay composed with big money on the line. Those are the fights that will always cause you to be one step ahead of your opponents because nobody has that kind of patience. And if you're able to secure that kind of patience, you're giving yourself an added advantage. There's no two ways about it. About an advantage, that fight all advantage. Better cash in quick, or I'm gonna I'm gonna start cashing in for these players calling, and then maybe you can start hitting me up from their accounts. Yeah, yo, yo Colin, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make another one. MVP detox. That's actually gonna know it's me every single time. I'm just gonna put MVP on all of these names. <laughs> That's branding right there, ladies and gentlemen. If you didn't know what branding was, you know what it is now because Jacob has given you a life lesson. Make sure you keep yourself all. Look at this. Or this yeah. game, no matter how many times yeah. I didn't even know that was possible to be honest I thought it's just like the luggage on Vascar I, I just thought it was a little bit too big that it would kind of get hold stuck on, hold on, wait, on the wait, cover you, you thought it was did you did you happen to think that it might have been Pause. too thick too thick with three C's boy you know I love that word that's thickness right there I, I just didn't think it would fit, you know, at the end of the day. Hey, it, hey. That's just the way the torque bow works. If you hit it, if you try to put it through the thin covers or the small cover, it just doesn't fit. Same with the boom shot. I boom shot myself enough to know. 
I mean, I'm I'm also one of them dudes. I'm also one of them dudes that had one of those like play block sets growing up, and I would always just try to just ram the the wrong blocks in the wrong hole. I wasn't the smartest tool in the shed, all right. I wasn't the brightest crayon in the box, but I said, look, you gonna go in there. You might be a square peg, but you going in that round hole whether you want it to be or not. Uh, look how long these replays are, though. So you gotta I give Casa de Papel. Some credit. Oh, not too much credit, though. Uh, no, <laughs> not, not, not too that. much credit. Uh, that, was a, okay. that was a caster's curse time to bring that up because they were playing so well just up until a certain point. Very, very similar to Canals. They were just playing so well up until that certain point. What that point was, I don't know. Maybe they got gassed out. Maybe Rise got done playing with their food. But at the end of the day, it, it was still 3-0.